we can read. And finally, after five years of roller coaster ride on the Nigeria soccer scene, the bubble finally bursts for the Franco German coach of the senior national team, that's Super Eagles, Gennett Roy. The Nigerian Football Federation, NFF, parted ways with Roy and announced former international defender Austin Eguavoy as the interim technical advisor. This was the position of Babajiri and other guests when the debate over impact of Raw on the team came up for discussion in November. Let's share this with you. Well, in the last five years, we've been watching the Eagles for patriotism's sake. <laughs> that is our team. We have no choice in this matter. But as I will tell you, that these are qualifiers and you qualify the way you can. You can now play beautiful football when you get to the World Cup proper. But the morning shows the day. Mm. If you don't have a team that has an organic center, something to hold them together, mm. then you have no team. What we need now is to qualify first. Then you can now chase the elephant in the room when we get there. The natural has overstayed his welcome. He's been in Nigeria for so long. He is eventually going to be the longest serving Super Eagles coach of all time. Mm -mm. But what have we got to show for it? That's the question. Well, in West House spent quite some time, but he also delivered trophies. Starting with the Equus Cup that he won in Bauchi in 1989, December 1989. So what are the trophies that Gedadra can show us for all the years that he's been coaching this team? Igbos need a better coach, a better coach at this time who can really change the way we play, who can impose a style of play that mm. we all can be happy about. Desired my, results. My, my biggest worry and my biggest fear on that Gedadra is the fact that some people gave him this job um, easily and that has brought Nigerian football to arguably its lowest ebb and why do I mean um, the lowest ebb at this stage um, he made mention of Otto Gloria Otto Gloria came in in 1979 we won the Nations Cup in 1918 the first time Nigeria would win the Nations Cup and in 1980 when Nigeria won the Nations Cup we had you know good players come to West Half on that West Half players came from Europe but could not break into the national team. John Fashion was one of them. He could not break into the Super Eagles squad. Best at making good, a good name for himself in England or wheresoever in the world. But the team was crack. Today, it's a different kettle of fish entirely. Anybody can stroll into the camp, provided you play in Europe. Whether we qualify for the World Cup or we don't, but the way it's looking, it's as if we're going to qualify. Gennady cannot take us to the next World Cup. No, it's just not good enough. It's not even in Africa. It's not good enough. What has he won on this continent for us? He's unable to get these players to complement one another and deliver the goods. Then it's, it's about time that we find a new coach. This coach who has failed on the African continent, we don't have to take him to the World Cup. They've got to find another coach, and there are coaches who can get this job done. Yes, November we actually set the agenda and Mia was with us that time. Definitely. And Mia is, <laughs> he's not joining us. Mia Kiri. Okay. And then um, Augustine de Guavon. That's it. Apparently, how many days to the Nations Cup? Less than 27 days to, to the, the Nations, Nations Cup. Cup. The biggest soccer fiesta in Africa. So, what's the implication of the move by the Nigerian Football Federation yesterday? Well, it shows how our football has gone down the drain, you know, um, under Madrid Pinnick. When Pinnick was coming to office, Pinnick promised Nigerians scientific football. And when he got into office, he said they were going to get us a good foreign coach, an expatriate. And the basis of bringing an expatriate is to do the job better than those who are here, who are Nigerians. And that's why we bring expatriates into the country. After 1,955 days, Raw 
is the longest serving coach in the history of Nigerian football for over 72 years. No man living or dead, you know, has been able to achieve that, except for Clemens West out of about 1,700 days or thereabouts. But in five years, what do we have to show for our football? As a journalist, I can't confidently tell you the Super Eagles first 11. That's how bad the team is. But let's go back in time. In 2018, I was at the World Cup in Russia. And what Gennett Raw and the NFF echoed the same thing was that we have the youngest team to the World Cup in Russia. After 2018, we had the 2019 African tournament in, Alge in, um, in Egypt. Algeria won the, won the Nations Cup. They beat Nigeria. And even at the World Cup, questions were asked about how, how technically sound Raw is. We had to go back in time. After three years on the job, Raw was a journeyman in African football. He was sacked by the Stalins of Burkina Faso. Mm -hmm. He was sacked by Etoile Sportif du Sahel in Tunisia. And what the Nigerian Football Federation told us, yes, but I'm a journalist, I'm a reporter, and I won't forget easily, was that Arsene Wenger recommended Genet Raw to Nigeria. But there is no foreign coach that has done badly as Genet Raw in the history of Nigerian football. And with 27 days to the African tournament, this is where we find ourselves. But the question I want to ask now is, on that row in five years, the NFF never set up a technical committee. Will Ego Avoyen, as a Nigerian, get a technical committee that will vet his list as sports? That's a million dollar question. Okay. Babajide, yes, when you are given an assignment, I know Ego Avoyen, this is on a hard dog basis. Mm. But I don't see any reason we should embark on this Nations Cup if we are not going to win it. Because the crop of players and everything. Now, do you see an Augustin Eguavoin delivering these goods? No, uh, he's been coach of the national team before, at least twice. What did he achieve with us? What is the evidence to show that he has brushed up his uh, knowledge of the game? We see them put um, a technical team in place made up of people that you can't really vouch for their competence. So that's not even encouraging. Somebody who was banned by FIFA for match fixing and... That's Samson Sessa? No. Um, uh, Sally Samson. Samson. Okay. He was banned. He served his time. Okay. And the first thing we, t we thought we could do was simply to bring him back. You know? So we... Nigerian football has been going steadily down. I won't even totally blame Gennad Roa because before Roa took over, we did not qualify for the Nations Cup for two competitions on the bounce. And he came, we were in a very tough group. The problem with Roa is not that he did not do well initially. He began to decline. He hmm. was in a difficult group Challenge. where you had Cameroon, where you had Zambia, you know where you had Algeria, had we had Algeria, and he qualified. The same Algeria that he had beaten easily was the one that won the Nations Cup. Mm. The same Cameroon that he beat 4-1 has been beating Nigeria since then. So the team has been declining steadily, and there is no discernible pattern of play. And it's not for and lack of superstars. No, countries that ought not to beat Nigeria. Hmm. How can Central African Republic be beating exactly. Nigeria? That's the evidence that, look, this team is on a free fall. Hmm. I would have wished that we took this decision a lot earlier. But these people will not listen. Hmm. We should have taken this decision a lot earlier because at a point, maybe his, own, his players were no longer self-motivated. Because I don't see how <laughs> a promising team could just suddenly begin to decline and be losing matches even to uh, soccer minions. Hmm. On our, on our continent. I don't know. There was a time Amadou Shabu said, we didn't have the right set of players. And we, we evolve, we move past that generation and we assemble we assembled new set of players. And with these new players, do you think an Augustin de Quavo will be able to maximize the potential of the if, natural and if, if, if I'm even asked, if I'm even asked, I would want to ask, you know, um, those who run football in Nigeria, where are the footballers? 
who are the players? Yes, we have individual stars. We have individual players. But unfortunately, as a team, mm -hmm. we've not been getting a track. We don't have a team because we don't even have a first level. Hmm. And that's the worry. Now, you're giving a man this kind of assignment 27 days to the tournament. You made mention of Amadou Shwai, but let's take it back to the year 2013 when Keshi won the Nations Cup. After Keshi won the Nations Cup, there were issues between Keshi and this Nigerian Football Federation. Mm. In fact, I can confirm authoritatively that in 2013 in South Africa, in the dressing room, Keshi had to tell some board members of the NFL not to come into the dressing room at half time because they were distracting the team. We were to play against the elephants of Cote d'Ivoire. The NFL thought we were going to lose. They were already buying tickets to come back home to Nigeria. No, but against our odds, we won the nation's score. Mm -hmm. They thought but, the, uh, the Ivorians were too good. They were too good. Mm -hmm. Now, it took the intervention of the then president, good luck, Billy Jonathan, to reinstate Stephen Okechiko Keshe after speaking to the Nigerian Football Federation. This is the same set of coaches you don't believe in. In 2015, Keshe was eventually sacked because they felt he applied for the job of the elephant of Cote d'Ivoire. But take a look at our football since then. Nothing. But I would ask again, under a foreigner, we never had a technical committee to vet the list of players. I would wait and see if this Nigerian Football Federation board will come up with a technical committee. Keshi never allowed it. They fought Keshi. He never liked it. Let the coach take the blame. Mm -hmm. Nobody asked Raw. Raw said, I am the coach. If I don't do well, sack me. But despite the fact that Raw was the highest paid coach in the history of Nigerian football for five years, he had no targets going to the 2019 Nations Cup. Keshi was given a target, go and win the Nations Cup. But he, he, he's been old uh, salaries. He was, he was old. As we, as we, hold, we hold Manfred Honor. That, anyone that comes here as a foreign coach, we will not pay. Hmm. The reason Vestaroff survived for that long was because he had a personal relationship with the then number two man, That's it. I homo. Mm -hmm. So he could walk up to him and ask for anything. Augustine. We are owing this Genatura, we are mm -hmm. owing him now. The mm -hmm. same way we hold Manfred Honor. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mira yeah, Kiri, thank you for your contribution. Manifest. Thank you. We wish that um, come January. Something good it will take will doing the next oh, they, they, I, think, I, I think we should even move beyond simply thinking that the coach is the problem. Because Philippa Trouze didn't succeed here in Nigeria. Right. But he went to, to Japan and succeeded. And took the team right up to the quarterfinal of the World Cup for mm. the first time. Mm. But mm. here in Nigeria, he did not, it it not succeed. succeed. I mean, something is wrong. Oh. When Ulysses said, oh, I'm using Ulysses', Ulysses words. There are witchcrafts in Nigerian football. Not my words now. People didn't understand. When Ulysses realized he had been it's used, the management, in Yama, management style. He mm. woke up too long. Well, <laughs> you can go on and on and on. Vicky, mm. yeah. thank you for your contributions today.